It's been a good afternoon. It's great to see. And it's, it's, it's been exciting to hear Tyson describe some of the background of why InstaPage was founded. I mean, most of us know InstaPage. It's one of the most popular landing page builders out there. Um, Autopilot, similarly, was built from a need. Uh, companies want to be able to create a great killer customer experience, not just have a killer application. Uh, my background is having worked in mostly B2B SaaS companies. I was at a company called C I was a co-founder of a company called Codesion, which we sold to Collabman, which is like a software development uh, and hosted tools platform. Uh, then I went to Zendesk, where I was for ran the online business there. So we used a lot of automation for many different purposes, including trials, um, including trials, including nurturing, including all of our events and so on. Um, and my role was interesting because I spanned, I was mostly focused on the acquisition side and the growth side, so um, and I sort of spanned between sales, product marketing, and product. And then here at Autopilot, uh, my role is, is, is a great one, um, and I have an amazing team, and we, and the company in general, is all focused and aligned around how to uh, use our product to really grow faster, and also, secondly, enable our entire uh, industry and segment to become effective with what we call customer journey marketing. We're trying to break down this language around marketing automation and really make it be about the customer journey. Um, so I'm gonna sort of describe a little bit at a high level and then we're just gonna jump in and I'll show you a little bit of how we've structured our autopilot and uh, the ways in which we're growing internally right now as well. Just stealing from an idea that was over at Slack about two months ago, they did something similar. It was really instructive to see like how Slack uses Slack. So, uh, but at a high level, obviously, like, what we do is we, uh, and in general, using automation, the goal is to accelerate your growth with nurturing. So, um, you know, at a high level, this right here is a view of our of our actual lead funnel. We have paid or we have paid leads, we have organic leads. We get about ten percent of our monthly leads all <coughs> from our own nurturing database itself. So. Um, we use Autopilot for converting trials into customers. We use Autopilot for re-nurturing leads back up to fill the top of the funnel, as well as for newsletters, like you're asking, as well as for events and so on. Um, the, the critical insight here is that 30 to 50% of um, people who sign up on sites are actually interested in buying today, uh, usually more like the 30% end. But of those who aren't ready to buy today, which is the 70%, half of those will be rated to re-engage within the coming 12 months. And this is sort of fairly standard literature we're pulled across from, from the industry and from various reports out there. Um, and so, you know, we always think about it as if you've gone through all that time and energy and effort and money to go through all your different demand channels and you're not focusing on that other 75%, you're really missing, missing out on an opportunity to, uh, to grow faster. So I'm going to jump and show some quick results and then jump in. So these are some of the results we see that are pretty standard, right? So customer journey marketing in general through acquisition, reactivation, growth, retention. You should be able to drive 10 to 20% increase in overall top line revenue. Personalized onboarding increases conversion rates by 25 to 100%. So for example, uh, you know, if you differentiate, as I'll show you in a second, if you send a basic introduction uh, journey to new customers signing up for trials, and you do no level of specialization, no segmentation, then you may achieve you know, standard industry benchmarks of like five to 10% click rates, and maybe 10 to 20% open rates. Um, if you introduce a, a segment that naturally aligns with the way people are using your service, so have they published their first journey or not, for example, you will immediately see open rates increase and click rates increase because you're speaking more personalized to each of those different segments and more to the point, driving them to take action that you know is going to help them with becoming more active with using the service. And, uh, so I can talk a little bit about that. Uh, the third is you know, reactivate 2% of your old leads per year. So if you have 100,000 leads within your database, then you should be shooting to be generating 2,000 leads a year just by systematically harvesting and reactivating with a content strategy that helps bring people back up to, uh, to re-engage. Again, focused on uh, we just did some personalization research recently and found that the most important uh, element for consumers today is, is being uh, contacted at the right time. Secondly, in the right context, so uh, you know, on site or an email in a way that's uh, on the right channel that they typically want to engage in is the second most important element. And the third is is using personalization in those forms of communication. So, um, right time, right context, in the right way. Uh, and then lastly, another key element as well, which we also use Autopilot for linking the survey monkey, and then now we're using a new service called Ask Nicely, is to do uh, regular NPS surveys as well, so net voter score surveys. 
identify whether or not your customers are who recommend you to friends or colleagues, and then based on that, you can really sort of tailor your uh, your, your marketing and your efforts. And you know, we've uh, we've just completed our first round of NPS ourselves, and we're really happy. We got a 52 on that score, which is uh, higher than we expected. And what that tells us is we have a lot of work to do, but also that we can really start to spend more time working with the community rather than doing sort of hard uh, engagement. Uh, but you know, the key insight, this is a stat that I stole from Zendesk, is that 87% of customers will share their great expense experiences with others, which in turn drives to more referrals, more deep business, more long-term success for both the customer and the company. So um, anyway, I'm gonna jump from here, and these are numbers kind of pulled from research, from prior experience in other companies, um, but I'm gonna ask a question. How many people here are uh, in a SaaS business? How many people here are in B2B? How many people here at B2C? Okay, so you're about split, which is actually about in line with our, uh, our customer base. So um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, jump in and show you Autopilot and uh, how we're using it. So I'm gonna go ahead and close these out and also log out of, uh, out of Mike's Instagram account here. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and take you through a little bit of how we've actually set up our instance. And by the way, I should note that, um, so Annie over here runs our demand generation, and she's been a big organizer today and actually put this entire event together. So congratulations to Annie. Uh, we also have Danielle in the back, who's one of our, our uh, who just published a blog post today about different tools you can use. Um, we've got the back, our designer, we have a, uh, who's now managing our Ustream today, as well as Brian, who's not here today, he managed our blog. Everybody in the team, and one of the big benefits of working with an easier to use platform, um, is that unlike, you know, much more, I've used Marketo for years, I've used Pardot, we've known, you know, used Eloqua, you really need sophisticated admins who are fully focused 100% of the time in managing and maintaining. You still need oversight, obviously, with automation, but one of the benefits of an easier to use visual platform is that everybody in our team actually runs different journeys. So, you know, Annie's done quite a lot of journeys with people for today for the event to come here. Um, you know, Brian writes journeys with weekly blog reviews. Um, so that's a key benefit that, um, that comes with, a, with an easier form of, of an automation platform. So we've set up our journeys sort of into different categories. First of all, this is our journey tab. Uh, we think about forms and as well as our heads up. So this is our heads up from earlier today, seeing our group uh, starts in 15 minutes, first time I'm logged in. So once I close that, that will not be redisplayed. But uh, this is where you go and capture all of our different forms. Um, like, for example, buckle up is if you go to our website, then you'll see, um, if you go to Autopilot HQ, then, and you go down to our footer, then you'll see a little link down here, buckle up. So you put your email in there, that's one way in which we um, capture leads. We have a blog subscribe form, request a demo, contact request, heads up, and then a big one that we don't show right here is, um, is our trial. So our next sort of class or genre of journeys and these are sort of ordered in terms of mission critical journeys and down. We have our trial and onboarding, then lead nurturing, which is our nurture machine that I'll take you through in a second. Uh, user behavior, so this is where we're doing both rewarding positive behavior as well as discouraging negative behavior. So if people are coming in and they've failed, for example, to integrate their Salesforce CRM, we actually help bring them back and, and drive the content that will provide documentation on that. On, alternatively, if they've just you know, uploaded a set of contacts for the first time, we reward them as well. That's all usage triggered um, uh, emails as well as heads up. Our newsletters, um, so you know, we set a monthly newsletter, which is an aggregation of um, all of our content as well as feature releases. Uh, we do webinars regularly as well, so we've actually integrated with GoToMeeting via Zapier, so when you go and register for a GoToMeeting, uh, we pull that into autopilot and then in turn we can, uh, and actually our sales team uses this as well for our weekly uh, demos. It automatically allows you to register, pull that in autopilot, and you can put them through a journey of notifications and thanking them for following up. Um, 
Seventh, we do uh, meetups and events. So similarly, we integrate with Eventbrite via Zapier. And so, for example, all of you today have received some communications about being here. That's all automated through, uh, through once you fill out a form and close into autopilot, you can create a journey for, uh, for welcoming you here and then following up. Um, customer success, so we use this for journey reviews, which, we were, which Mike was describing earlier, as well as product. So Peter Sharkey, uh, who's in the back over there, is our product had a product here that's built out a ton of, uh, of proactive engagements as well, um, such as if you search on our Zendesk for a particular article, and he actually has a, has a, a popular and commonly used uh, uh, heads up message, it used to be an email, that says, I hope you, you know, did you find what you're looking for? A lot of people will respond to that as well. We also have these things called operational journeys, where we'll do things like uh, manage revenue attribution based on UTM. So we can see, depending on where people came from, on any source where you actually have control of the URL, so paid sources primarily, you can add people into smart segments and then use that to, uh, to update a field value in autopilot, sync that to Salesforce, and then in Salesforce, you can now look at you know, new trials, wins, revenue, and back that up to the initial uh, lead source. We do capture multiple touches through the course of uh, of the different engagements, we'll capture all the different UTMs along the way. Um, so it's not just last touch. So I'm gonna go back and sort of take you real quick and give you a sense of what our trial journey looks like, first of all. And we're about to do like a pretty major um, experiment. So Mike described a few minutes ago, there's the splitter function. And uh, like we described, the splitter can be used not just for um, sending an email, the splitter can be used for absolutely anything in autopilot. So for example, um, here we have someone's filled out a free trial form. You can actually, um, you know, you could split the output from there, add them to list A and list B, and actually split test your entire journey, which is what we're about to do shortly, and actually take like an event-based approach versus a time-based approach to doing this. Uh, what we do is if you fill out a form and sign up for a free trial autopilot, we'll check and find your, we'll send a quick notification to the Slack channel saying so-and-so just signed up. We also capture some information on there that's actually um, that's actually uh, updated in the Slack notification. So we're seeing every time someone signs up, how you heard, first name, last name, and so on. Um, that gets notified to our journal channel. Um, then we also look and see if they're a, a company on the company. If not, then um, we'll add them to a list, which is they're entering a trial. We send an event via segment um, to segment. So have, who, has anybody here heard of segment, or how many people here for segment? So, so, so it's an event bus, uh, one of our partners allows you to pass data between like 150 different applications. And the long story short is this right here allows us to pass an event saying someone just signed up for a trial, which in turn we pull into a mixed panel, we can see that an activation follows. So we can see how active people are getting during the course of a trial. Uh, we can also see like on our phone every time someone signs up. So then next we, we suppress our competitors so that they don't get 100% insight to everything we do. And obviously that's just by Gmail, by their domain email. So if they sign up with Gmail, then they are getting access, but that's just the way it goes when you have a free trial service. Um, we then send an SMS welcoming them, and then we take them down essentially two different paths. So we have a series of essentially company branded emails that are personalized based on experience, which is really designed to activate you. Um, secondly, we go and we will assign these leads into um, Salesforce, so we take a little delay, we check the field, we find out, um, so actually another thing we've done, and uh, this is an interesting way if you're in a SaaS business with very high volume, is we actually split our signups into an online channel versus a channel that runs through our sales team. So the online channel, I mean, frankly, we start off asking how large the company is, but we're actually seeing that some people have small, in our space, uh, in autopilot business today, like a lot of small businesses have large contact size and actually fairly large customers and or have a lot of needs that we want to help them with. Um, so we used to ask how large is your company as a splitting function, which I've done in past companies. Here we, we actually ask how many contacts do you have in your database. And typically you find about 80% of the time. Uh, we don't know that here for sure yet, but typically you ask questions about 80% of the time. It's right, about 20% of the time it's wrong. Um, and there's other ways to find out if people are uh, not following the demographic they sort of self, they self identify. We have what we call home callers. We actually call and welcome all of our customers, provide insight, and also find out some more information about them. And we tabulate it in Salesforce and it gives us a really good insight into our customers' usage. I'll show you that in a second. Um, so, first of all, we find out if they are, we check the field, marketing contacts right here, 
if it's uh, under 2,500, and you can see this if you go to, I'm gonna come back here for a sec, but sign up for a free trial on autopilot. And you'll see here, first name, last name, email, how many contacts we'd be marketing to. So if someone selected the uh, under 2,500 here and then fill that out, then we take you down here, where first of all, we pop a heads up, it's from Mike, CEO. Tyson's been doing this as well, it ends the page, it works really well. And we say, welcome to Autopilot, it's, you know, we have spots open at this week's live demo. And that actually goes to Matt and James over here and over here. Actually, James is not there, there's James. Um, they're both product experts, uh, worked with Matt at Zenda, James has been here for over two years and knows Autopilot really well. And our sort of goal with, with, our, with our demo and sales approach is to get people active and running as quickly as possible and sort of have the product take care of the rest. Um, so if it's, you know, of these under 2,500, we take them down the online swimming lane, as we call it, which is uh, they get invited to a group demo, kind of like the Apple Genius Bar, and people can attend and ask whatever questions you want. We treat it like a one-on-one, -on -one, but there'll be a group of people in there, and it works really, really well. And then we assign that to this fictitious person named Stacy Stinson, who is a, uh, uh, who is a, a fictitious face of, of autopilot, actually. Um, and she'll engage with a lot of customers. Then if they're of the larger, the, you know, of the larger uh, uh, market contact database size segment, then we'll assign those directly into Salesforce to the team, and um, those will be split between Matt and James. And you know, at, at a broader level, you can do this between teams, between groups, by owner role. There's many different ways you can do that at scale as well. Um, from there, we add a delay, and then down here we have a, uh, a path that's basically designed to find out if uh, any one of these particular leads uh, or trial signups has already been heavily engaged in working with one of the team. If they are not, then there's these welcome emails that are very personalized coming from Matt or James saying, would you like to set up a working session? And they can go to a Calendarly link and actually schedule time there. Again, it's kind of like the Apple Genius Bar approach. Um, we do that you know, after, like immediately after 30 minutes. And then we split them into um, usage categories, so we find out if they published the journey or not, or are they paying. And if they have not published the journey, then on day two, we'll send an email to them that says, um, follow up to see if you're working, uh, if you're interested in a working session, and that's if they uh, have not published the journey. But if they have published the journey, then the day, then that email will be more to me. It looks like you're off to a great start with autopilot. And just these little subtle um, uh, language points will change the way in which people are in engage and interact. So this track down below is this sort of parallel direct path for those larger accounts. And then everybody gets access also to our emails that are really designed to proactively enable customers. So again, we, we welcome their, their first email. And our first email says, uh, welcome to Autopilot. And, um, and we say, are you ready for remarkable marketing? And um, here are some, some ideas to get started. Right? Attend a live demo creative marketing automation journey, learning best practices. So really about you know, sort of introducing the new concepts of customer journey marketing. Then from there, we waited for two days. Um, so did research in the past and basically found that you know, very motivated users of your platform, typically within the first um, 72 hours, are gonna separate themselves out from those who are not. And so you'll see like power users who come on board and get active and running very quickly. You'll see those who drop off and sort of pretty much go away and you want to nurture them. Then you'll see this group in the middle, like the yellows, it's green, green, yellow, red. The yellows are the ones who are on the fence, they may be busy, they, they need to work with you, but there's not necessarily um, either an initial need or they're confused how to get started. And we really want to make sure that we help and sort of work with them. So what we're doing here is we're, tracking, we're looking to see if you've added a tracking code. If not, then right off the bat, we're sending through another heads up message that's after day two. Say, I noticed you haven't added your tracking code, want to capture forms and so on. Let's get tracking. And this will step them through on how to do that. But that'll happen no matter what. We also sent another event to let them know that we did a little nudge there so we can see that uh, in mixed panel and in our activation funnel. And then secondly, we go through and um, we'll check and see if they've published the journey or not. So if they have not added the tracking code and they've not published the journey, we send them email A. If they have not published the tracking code but have published the journey, then we send them email B. All of these are similar format but different content that's reinforcing their behavior and then providing appropriate next steps as well. Um, so it goes on. And then the same, so there's four variations there. We then have a wait step, 
Uh, we do a, a day seven, a similar approach as well, one of four different variations. So my first company, CBS Dude, we had up to 13 different email variations, and like I said, at each one of those touch points, and again, like based on every time you increase that specificity, as long as you're finding like, the right events, you know best for your business like what people need to be doing to get active and successful with your service. Every time you identify one of those, track it with us, you can either push it in via segment, via our API, or via our API, then you can, um, you can segment based on that and give a much more specific personalized message there. And each time you'll see a big increase in the, uh, the open rates and click rates. Um, and then we pass through it. We go to the end of a 30-day trial. At the end, um, if they have not purchased, we add them to a nurture. Uh, and we also then will update this field value over in Salesforce to say, uh, this is now a nurture status lead. Uh, we pass everything to Salesforce because A, we have salespeople, and B, because we actually use Salesforce as, a, as an automated um, billing platform, essentially, or at least a tracking platform. And I'll show you that in a second, but all of this is now ported to Salesforce. We can see trial signups, we can see how many of them convert, how many of them get active, um, and we can sync that all over there, and then also like, what's actually in there. So that's a quick view on our trial. Um, I'd say sort of at a high level, it's um, been very effective and if this is a time-based approach. Uh, there's also a way where rather than doing it based on time, you do it based on whether certain actions have been taken. And so you say like immediately, have they published a journey, have they added a tracking code, have they added a user, have they um, like synced their CRM? And each step of the way, if yes, like blast to the next level, if no, then sort of escalate down through touch points and help them doing that. We have one customer, we just had a webinar about that a few weeks ago, that's doing a brilliant job with that. So we're about to go and split test this whole thing where we're currently doing this time-based approach. We're separately gonna do like an event-based approach for engagement. And the output of that is your power users get much better. Um, I'm gonna stop there for a second. Any questions so far? Or is this getting a little bit too deep? Or how, uh, is there anything I can, I can sort of answer separately? Yeah, Tyson. I was just going to say, are you guys uh, using the postcard on yourself, sending a postcard out to maybe some of your customers that have been on for a while? Do you guys utilize that? We've used that for party invites, and that worked out really well there. We've also used it for like a demand gen. We went to send a campaign, we sent postcards to a list of, we identified like 500 VPs of marketing and CMOs, and used postcards in an outbound sort of a fashion there, and then retargeted them if they visited certain pages, add them to ad groups, and then from there, if they filled out a form that we linked them to, then we start re-nurturing. But we didn't get a huge pickup there so yeah. far, so I think we just need like a much higher sample size to do that. But that, that approach, we're gonna sort of replay again. Nice. It's also a good follow-up for conferences, so like Dreamforce, we use that as well. People yeah, that's right. Food, so. Yeah. Your question? Yeah. Do you guys have any, sorry, just more. No, go for it. Do you guys have any plans to integrate with Salesforce IQ? Um, we, you can currently pass it in and out with Zapier, yeah. Um, in terms of plans moving forward, we, we do know the Salesforce IQ people, so there's no hard and fast plans, but um, yeah, currently no formal, no formal plans, yeah. We want to make a, simply to begin with, like having the experience here and then having a fairly tight integration with CRM work really well, as sort of the initial, the initial one. Yeah. yeah. I think you may have already just applied the answer. But can you start journeys before people actually uh, enter personally identifying information? Like you guys mentioned your your parameters mm -hmm. based on they hit a page, they you collect their um, parameters and then cookie them. Yeah. Uh, if they come back, can you give them based on those parameters like heads up or show them a different piece of content or something like that? Yeah. So um, the base. High level, uh, the main purpose of what we do is to turn anonymous users into known users and then start to market to them. So that is kind of the basic. There are a few ways to engage people. Postcards would be one. Heads up right now is treated the same way as an email. You have to be a known user. But there may be something called proactive heads up that may treat that differently in the future that could actually allow people who you don't have as a known user, for example, a website visitor who might be interested in your, your content and you say, would you like to learn more, subscribe to our list, and that pops up. That would be an example of where uh, you could use any visitor to your site and very quickly grab their, their, their information as well. Yeah? Um, I was just gonna, gonna say, after watching this, I mean, clearly you guys have filled out some really amazing uh, journeys. And so we just started using Autopilot ourselves about a month ago. Um, 
and we're, we started just like it with minimum viable journeys. And yeah. Just by using the heads up feature to post to new users to attend our webinar, we've seen about a 30% increase of attendees to our webinar, which equals about 40 extra people uh, per week. Which uh, that that one thing alone is already adding you know a, a ton of new revenue to our bottom line. And now you know that some of the emails is working so well, we're, we're hiring a dedicated marketing automation person just to own. This entire journey because um, you know, we want to get to the point that you guys are at. So. Yeah. Cool. No, that's that's great to hear. I mean, we actually had a similar with uh, our weekly group webinar. We did it a couple weeks ago, and I think the number of uh, weekly attendees who go to that group webinar went from like a handful to over twenty. <laughs> the first day that we used that heads up coming from Mike to, uh, to to invite them into the group webinar, so that had a huge impact of messaging in product and separately doing it from uh, you know from Mike. You know, it's always exciting to hear from the CEO. So, um, all right. So that's one. Another area that is, um, and I'm kind of jumping straight to the advanced topics because they're possibly the most interesting. And frankly, we're still ourselves like seven months into growing, so um, uh, we have a long way to go, but. You know, one is the trial, and again, we're going to do more specificity, more use of heads up, and we're actually going to start split testing the entire journey as well. So, lots of excitement there. We plan to publish this stuff as lab results, like on our blog and in flight school. So, um, if anyone wants to participate, we'd love to sort of get third-party data points as well and share that either in aggregate or like no absolute numbers or whatever. Um, I'll show you one other thing as well while we're at it. So, you know, the way in which we actually track this as well, I'm going to come into Salesforce for a second here. And I was describing to you a few minutes ago using Salesforce. And um, so this right here, like again, like I just showed a few minutes ago, that if you go to uh, our journeys in autopilot, um, I showed you you're creating a lead. So as soon as you create a lead, you assign that into Salesforce, that becomes a lead in Salesforce, and that's your actual number of monthly trials, for example. Uh, so one thing you can do is based on the lead create date, you can look at the other thing we do is if someone purchases, we update their their, their status from being non-paid to paid, and um, you update that as a field in autopilot. You can sync autopilot fields to Salesforce fields, and so you can update a field in Salesforce, and you can see that become activated, not activated. Like in our case, we look at if you publish a journey and a couple other things. So on a cohort basis here, you can see of all of our trials that signed up in uh, you know. By month, you can see how many of those became active, and then how many of those converted. And this is sort of one type of view I built out on a demo dashboard that gives you a sense of you can just quickly see like sign up to activation to win rate on a cohort basis month to month. Another thing you can do is you can uh, in autopilot, and I'll show you this. Um, so when someone actually purchases, um, we have what we call the new customer the new customer journey. What we do is we actually create an opportunity in Salesforce. And when you create an opportunity, you uh, essentially what you're doing, because you're doing this to a, everybody who's running through a journey in Autopad as a person, right? So if recurly subscription becomes new, we create an opportunity. Because you're doing that in Salesforce, that automatically converts a lead into an opportunity. And we pipe in the MRR value. And in doing so, you now actually have a way of visualizing uh, purchases. So now we can see monthly new purchases, for example, and then you know we're also mapping our revenue values in there. So now you can start to use Salesforce to do everything that Salesforce is built for in an automated fashion. So you can see, like here, like I was showing you a second ago, there's a Stacy Stinson versus our non-Stacy Stinson signups on a daily basis. We can also look at like our average sales prices there, and you can see there's a big difference between um, between the two. And you can start to anyway. So long story short. With autopilot, you can couple with Salesforce. You can actually wake up every day and have like a view of your basic funnel and your business from leads to wins to revenue and ASP and so on. And the third thing that we're doing, that Mike was describing a little bit of a while ago, is um, I'm thinking down operational here. We've created a whole series of uh, attribution points. So um, you know we've come in here and created smart segments based on. Um, whether they came through from Google SEM or Google Display or AdRoll or um, Twitter or GetApp, you know the business review site's been working really well for us. Um, G2 Crowd, for example, some different ad networks. So you can use um, the UTM with what we call a, 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 a smart segment. So you create a smart segment which simply says any user that um, I'll take you over there right here. You create a new uh, called Smart. And um, 
if they fulfill a certain U, like UTM parameter, for example, then you could say this came from an AdWords source versus from an email link that you put in email, or literally anything you want. So we have like a Google Doc that has the classification for all the different UTMs we use, the source, the mediums, the, the types, and so on, and we have that all mapped out. Um, you can also do things like uh, you can create smart segments based on contact field value. So when they sign up, if they tell you I'm in the software industry, then um, you know, you can, and then that's mapped to a field value, then you could say everybody who's in software, you could use that to create a, smart, a software list, you can exclude people like from competitors, you can refine by, which means you can add people who are in other lists, you can, those who've submitted forms, so if they've submitted the free trial form or the sign up for the newsletter form, um, and so on. So, um, long story short, you can uh, get very granular with that. So I think the last thing I want to show you real quick, which is really cool, is the lead nurturing. Um, so the lead nurture journey that we talked about, like the way we get 10% extra leads per month, is uh, first of all, we have all these different ways in which people can enter into our nurture funnel, right? So if they've, uh, if they've filled out like the contact us form, buckle up, or if they've downloaded one of our, our eBooks, or if they've done things like attended webinars and registered for those or events, then we'll you know, make sure they're not paying us, we'll make sure they're not a competitor, we'll make sure they have to sign up for a free trial, because if they have, we take them into a sort of a duplicated but different uh, nurture track that invites them to log back in versus to um, contact us later on or sign up for a trial. Um, and then we say, let's add them into our nurture tracks. We also send an event to, to segments so we can see when people actually are entering a nurture funnel. And then from there, um, you know, the goal of nurturing is to add value and provide insight and educate users. And I think everybody in this room, I think one thing that's interesting that we hear a lot is people want to do this, but they don't know where to start. So we always say, like, spend 30 minutes, audit your blog, audit your site, audit your team, audit your, uh, you know, everybody has a core competency and the goal is to extract that out. And nurturing can be as simple as, like, create an email template with an image, two lines of text linked to a blog post, and that's the basis for building out a nurture journey. And what we do here at a high level is we've basically set up, uh, you know, we enter them in, we send an, an initial top of funnel email, so this is like non-branded, actually we have our brands on there, but it's all about like 10 KPIs to growing your business in the first. The, uh, 10 lead strategies and KPIs. The second is, um, you know, better landing pages. So we do a review of the landing page builders out there, which is actually how we first met the Instapage team, was Tyson jumped on and commented on blog posts like within two seconds flat. And, uh, <laughs> and we said, wow, this, this company is on it. Um, you know, swag marketing. So uh, this post that reviews how Atlassian and New Relic and so on send t-shirts in the trial journey. Um, you know, building your email list from scratch, like some strategies and tactics for how to do that. Um, all of these linked to blog posts, which provide more information. This is an email on how you build a nurture journey. And then with all of these, we basically say, um, you know, they're, I'll, I'll show you what the email looks like, but they're, really a pretty kind of like a la Envision, if you've ever seen any of their nurturing, it's very sort of graphical and light. Um, you, uh, you can very quickly just log in, um, log in, just load this up here. Basically the email is just a call to our blog or to other sources of content, like the past webinars, to our flight school, to our app, to our help center, various different places. But the goal of Top of Funnel is assuming they're early stage or uninterested, so it's definitely not about trying to sell but it might be about helping them increase your conversions. Here are 10 strategies, click here to read more. So then what we do is um, we then wait for five days, and then we go and we see if they have filled out the form, which is signed up for a trial. If they haven't signed up for a trial, we then check and see if they've clicked that email. If they've not clicked, we keep up this top tier level, we, keep, we take them on to the next sort of high level thought leadership piece. But if they um, have clicked, we take them down, we accelerate them, which means we take them down a second email that's related to the first content. So this is now the essential toolkit for, since you're interested in strategies for growing your business, here's some tools for using lead nurturing. Still trying to provide educational content and value that whether or not you ever sign up for a trial of autopilot, like you are gonna get some benefit out of that. And then secondly, we wait again, we run another check field, do they fill out a form, which is uh, sign up for trial. And, if they, and then we do one more uh, check status. If they have clicked it, now we do what we call a call to action. This is the third layer at the bottom of the funnel, essentially. And um, now it says delight your customers. Now we're actually being more directive and we're saying start your free trial. 
So if they don't click that though, or, at, or in the second tier, then we bump them back up. So we'll send them back up to the second level and then um, back up again to the top. So there you see, if they have not clicked, we send them up to the next email. So basically, we've got this three tier structure, 10 days apart, responsive to whether or not they're engaging your content. And uh, if they're not, we you know, keep them nurtured. And if they are, then uh, we either offer them to sign up for trial or we offer them a time to set up a call with our sales team. Now, the very end of all this, this is 10 days, nine emails, this is a quarter, so we do quarterly nurturing. At the end of it, then we add them to a list that says, you know, at the very end, they have not clicked. We have a five-day wait step of, over here, not clicked, add to list, and then at that point, um, they're done with that particular track, so that's the first quarter. And then you'll see we have Q3, which is the start of the next quarter. Um, and uh, that starts and is triggered by them entering that previous. We added the list saying they completed the first. This triggers them into the second, starts off with a five day wait step, and then we take them through some other stuff. And it just goes on and on. So, this is the way in which we think about nurture. And again, we're getting about 10% of our monthly leads from here right now. We can visualize this. We can see leads in Salesforce that are coming from nurture versus net new. We can see in a mixed panel. And this whole thing, you don't have to build it all at once. You can start off with a couple tiers, but um, you know, it took us, you sort of chip away at it, and it doesn't take that much time, and once you set it, like everyone starts running through, and it just keeps on going, and um, you know, all that hard effort, the content you're producing, the leads you're bringing in, it ensures that you're both um, making the most of those, and at the same time, as long as you're doing good content, unsubscribe rates, for us, the average unsubscribe rate is about 0.3%. The average open rate is about, um, in fact, we just recently finished a, um, I was just pulling for today, uh, a quick experiment that we've been doing for the last quarter. One thing we learned is that if you do those emails five days versus 10 days versus 15 days apart, we, we did an ABC with um, a thousand trials. There's no impact in whether or not you uh, you space them five days apart, 10 days apart, or 15 days apart. So good lesson for A-B testing is make sure you're doing uh, really significant differences if you want to see some initial results. But for us, like we need to know enough that if someone says to us, how frequently should we spread them apart? We do, we do 10 days. We now have data that says, because we think that's about appropriate for our customers based on the fact that unsubscribes are about 0.3%. But now we can say conclusively that whether it's five or 15, it really makes no difference. Now, if it was 10 versus 30 versus 90, then we'll probably start with some differences. So, um, I'm going to stop there because it's now almost 5 o'clock and um, we've just gone through a fair amount. Any, uh, any questions so far? Yeah. Sure. Yeah, so this is the number of people who've, uh, who've entered that particular step. So that's like the contact list, right? Correct, those are contacts, exactly. And then this right here indicates those who did not pass that step, which typically means that um, uh, they were an undeliverable email, for example. Or they've been sent an email before. So like Mike described, we've never sent the same email twice to the same person. So one of the reasons they get stuck here is if they've already received an email from before. Uh, you, uh, they'll pass through. Um, Sorry, actually, in this case, if it's 878, like these ones here, uh, they've already, they base your non liberal email, that's what that's telling us. Yeah? Uh, even though like, a customer journey is very like, custom, right, do you have any templates built in the system? Yeah. Uh, just to get started or tweak some existing? Uh, totally. So, uh, great question. So, first of all, uh, this is still an area that we're building out and improving, but we have our guidebook. So what I just described there was life cycle nurturing, and these are actual guides. So what I just showed you is like a more built out version of this guide right here that you can click and use to launch a brand new journey that's actually pre-built. The other thing is we can build these in-house and people can submit them. So you see I've got access to like pending approval, and these are ones that people submit to us. Um, so you can submit them, and then in time also you can create guides and you can share them with other instances. So let's say you got a friend in a different company, or you're just messing around between accounts that you have, you can also share guides between instances and use that as a way, for example, if you're a consultant and you're working with 10 different clients, you can offer them the same sets of uh, guides and reuse those over, it's like your IP, your product. When you say the top, so it's already built out, do you just have to offer the content? Right. 
Yep, so we have like pre-built email templates also that are in there that you can just go and change your logo. Like we want to make it easy for people to do what I just showed. But yeah, you can also replace that with your own email as well. Yeah? Um, you're talking about having quarter by quarter kind of like journeys. Is there a way to make sure that Yeah, so um, in terms of, so we have a trigger called a trigger, like a time day trigger, so you can trigger at a certain time. So um, if you had like a set of people you wanted to have end of a certain day, you could trigger from start and have delay stuff at the end of the certain day. So you just count? You'd have to count back, yeah. But I would assume there are people coming into this journey who are not necessarily in the same like they could end their journey in February and it'll say like, yeah. oh, you're having an end of, end of quarter four, even though they... So what you could do is you could, uh, you could very easily just go and create a, uh, a field update value, right? So you could trigger from at a time. So a certain time hits, you could update a field that says like end, right? And then you do a check field value on their journey so that like before you send a particular email, you run against the check, is, is that end yes or no? And okay. if no, then it wouldn't send it. So the time could be linked to a calendar date? You could, okay. yeah. You'd have to, that's kind of a way you could work into that. You use a time date trigger yeah. to, yeah, you do a check field, yeah, you can update a field value and then use a check field. Okay. Cool, well, um, I think that's probably enough for today. We're all here, so you can ask any questions you want. And uh, for that, so we do have our contest. So one question, is anybody here, who, has anybody submitted a contest application? You have? One, two. Wow, that's 50% chance of uh, pretty big winnings right there. <laughs> um, so you guys can do, you can go for another 30 minutes or so, and then we're gonna judge it, and then we're gonna update a field value, and it's gonna send you a winner, winner, chicken dinner um, journey. So you're gonna have to wait for a few minutes. Cool, all right, well thanks everyone for coming and uh, grab a beer and come say hi.